Hello guys, so today we are going to be reviewing PIA, which stands for Private Internet Access. We won't only talk about the strengths of PIA, why it's so popular, but also share some reasons or situations where a different VPN provider might be better suited for your needs. And just a reminder, if you do decide to get PIA, note that we won't post our affiliate links in the description. That's a big red flag and shows a strong bias for those of you who don't know nowadays you see a lot of reviewers who are shilling for vpn companies just to get an extra buck for their affiliate commissions and we here at security vultures are definitely sick of those bastards that's why we won't ever post our affiliate links in the description like you see so many other youtubers do it's totally fucked up pardon the language we are committed to making brutally honest reviews and we won't ever change our stance on that you should also be really careful about the top Google search results for VPN reviews because most of those are also just shady affiliates making extremely biased reviews just to get that sweet percentage of commission money. Now, let's take a quick look at some of these sites. As you can see, all of these sites are making a lot of money shilling for these VPN providers because they even pay for google ads so naive visitors think that they're getting an honest review when things couldn't be further from the truth now let's take a look at the reality on trustpilot this is a great site that posts random users feedback on various websites and services as you can see from an example vpn mentor has a really bad reputation and that's not even the worst of them now let's continue with the review guys so private internet access is a long-standing veteran in the vpn industry but a lot has changed in the past few years it was purchased by a company with a history of infecting devices with malware and the latest tests reveal some shortcomings in this private internet access pia review we set out to see how the vpn stacks up against the competition to do this, we purchased a subscription, researched the company, and thoroughly tested the VPN to see how fast our PIA servers in various locations around the US and Europe, how do the VPN applications work, including critical real-time tests of web RTC and DNS leaks, does the VPN have any data leaks or security problems, including their log policy? Does it work well with Netflix and other streaming services? Does it work well with torrenting? How good is their customer support? And of course, how is the pricing? So let's begin with an overall overview of our findings before getting into the details. Here is a brief overview of the test results and our research findings. So the pros, user-friendly and a secure VPN app, extra privacy and security features, and the prices are low. The cons, slow and inconsistent speeds. Based in the US, which has bad privacy jurisdictions, part of the 5i alliance, and we'll get into more of this later. It does not work well for Netflix and streaming, and they have a troubling history of their parent company, CAPE. Additional research findings shows PIA customer support tests and convicted cryptocurrency criminal hired as the CTO of PIA. Private internet access offers a nice selection of VPN apps for desktop and mobile operating systems. Additionally, PIA also has browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox, and Opera browsers. Most of the leading VPN companies today support more than just desktop and mobile operating systems. PIA does not fall into this category, so keep this in mind. For this PIA review, I thoroughly tested the Windows VPN client. Overall, the Windows client feels polished and it's also user-friendly. I also like the dark mode design. In addition to all the features we covered above, the PIA desktop client also has light and dark modes, settings to open VPN client on system startup, 
connect on launch settings to a specified VPN server, of course, different language settings, and customizable DNS options. And lastly, port forwarding. Overall, the PIA desktop clients work well. Now for the security and privacy tests, most people using VPNs today need a service that is secure and free of data leaks. And while data leaks are common with free VPN apps, this is not something we should expect with a premium paid service that promises security. So to test this, I ran both Windows and Mac OS clients through some basic VPN tests and checks to identify leaks or broken features. Below, I'm testing the PIA Windows VPN client for leaks while connected to a server in Sweden. You can see that there were no leaks to be found with my real IP address being blocked. WebRTC and DNS leak tests are extremely important. I don't want to go into detail as to why that is because the video will take too long, but you can check the links in the description. I also tested the PIA Mac OS client and found it to be secure and without leaks. Although I'm, sh I'm not sure I would consider PIA to be one of the best VPNs for Mac, it may still be a decent choice for Mac users. PIA also implements a good kill switch with their VPN apps, which will block traffic if the VPN connection drops for any reason. This ensures all traffic remains encrypted and protected by the VPN tunnel. The PIA kill switch has three levels, off, which does not block any traffic, auto, which blocks outside traffic when the VPN is on, and always, which also blocks all traffic when the VPN is off. In testing out the kill switch with various interruptions, everything appeared to work well. Does PIA work well for torrenting? When selecting the best VPN for torrenting, there are a few things you want to look for. Fast speeds, secure apps, good leak protection settings. While PIA offers secure apps with a kill switch, the speeds were not good in my tests. This means that torrenting most likely will be slow. On a positive note, PIA does have port forwarding which is useful with torrenting but the slow speeds are still a big drawback as you can see with the real-time tests right now the speeds are nothing to brag about another drawback for torrenting is once again the u.s jurisdiction the u.s has very strict copyright violation laws dmca and many large media companies that go after people for copyright infringement Using a VPN in an offshore jurisdiction may be safer as they would not need to comply with copyright infringement laws or deal with DMCA issues. As you can see, other users are experiencing a lot of issues with DMCA requests. We will also talk about this issue more in our future videos, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification on our latest videos, guys. We will also compare most popular VPNs and see which is the best option for heavy torrenting. Now let's talk about some more extra privacy and security features. Despite being a basic VPN service, private internet access still offers some good privacy and security features. In addition to the multi-level kill switch, which we discussed above, PIA also provides various data encryption options, including WireGuard, a VPN ad blocking feature called PIA Mace. First, the WireGuard protocol is an excellent feature that usually offers big advantages with performance. However, in our tests for this PIA review, WireGuard speeds were not very good. Nonetheless, the WireGuard VPN protocol does still offer some advantages, including upgraded security and more reliability on mobile devices. Another good feature offered by PIA is the ad blocker, which they call PIA Mace. PIA Mace blocks domains for advertisements, trackers, and malware. Unlike some other ad blocker options, PIA Mace does not have the ability to whitelist certain domains or adjust the filter settings. It is simply on or off. 
While some ad blocker is better than no ad blocker, I would not recommend using PIA Mace as your primary ad blocker. When I tested different VPN ad blockers, I found PIA's ad blocker did not block as many domains as other options. In terms of VPN ad blockers, NordVPN, Surfshark, and Privacy, Perfect Privacy performed much better. Now let's talk about speeds. One of the biggest drawbacks, as we've noted, was with speed performance. This was somewhat surprising, however, since most VPNs that support WireGuard have excellent performance. With PIA, I ran numerous tests on a 50 to 60 Mbps internet connection baseline speed. And as you can see, the results are really bad, getting only around 10 to 17 Mbps on US IPs is terrible and definitely slower than average. We also tested other locations in Europe. This was better than pr the previous test, but it still is quite slow and it was only around 20 to 30 Mbps. For comparison, NordVPN can go up to 300 Mbps, so most us users wouldn't notice much of a difference anyways unless they were on a super fast connection now let's talk about their no logs policy while private internet access does well in some areas of privacy one major drawback is the jurisdiction pia is based in the united states which is a member of the five eyes surveillance alliance and aside from the surveillance concerns there are also legal drawbacks to operating a VPN in the US. The biggest issue is that the US government can legally force businesses to log customer data and provide this to authorities. Additionally, authorities can also issue gag orders, thereby prohibiting the business from alerting its customers to privacy violations. There are previous examples of this happening, such as with uh, IP Vanish, being forced to log user data despite a no logs VPN. Another example was Lavabit being coerced to hand over encryption keys. Now let's talk about streaming services like Netflix and if PIA successfully bypasses their block. We will conduct a real time test right now. As you can see, PIA does not work well for streaming. We tried to test the series Power Rangers Dino Fury, which is exclusive to the US, UK, Australia, and Canada. And as you can see, it doesn't even show up in the search results. It's also important to note that the Netflix VPN issue is always a cat and mouse game that continues to evolve. The VPN providers, residential IPs that are used to bypass Netflix eventually got detected and blacklisted so they have to be replaced with new ones all the time now let's talk about the two biggest elephants in the room about PIA let's begin with the troubling history of the parent company CAPE CAPE purchased private internet access in November of 2019 CAPE was formerly named CrossRider and produced high-risk malware and adware that infected people's computers. CrossRider changed its name to CAPE due to controversial past activities. In 2017, CrossRider purchased CyberGhost VPN and then later Zenmate. Key figures behind CrossRider CAPE have ties to various intelligence organizations. As we have noted before, trust is a major factor when choosing privacy tools. After all, a VPN has the potential to record everything you do online when you decide to use it to encrypt traffic. Given the history of CAPE, which now owns PIA, it's clear that trust may be lacking due to controversial past activities. Another important red flag that's raised with PIA is this convicted cryptocurrency criminal hired as the CTO of private internet access for reasons that are not entirely clear some of the higher uppers 
at private internet access, decided to hire Mark Karpelis as the CTO, Chief Technology Officer, in April of 2018. To understand why this was upsetting to many PIA users, we'll just take a look at Mark Karpelis. Mark Karpelis was running MT Gox in 2014 when it suddenly collapsed with millions of dollars in bitcoins disappearing. Karpelis was subsequently arrested in Japan and charged with fraud and embezzlement. As to where all the bitcoins that were stored at MT Gox ended up, nobody seems to know. In March 2019, Karpelis was found guilty of tampering with financial records in a Japanese court. Now let's talk about customer support. Private internet access offers email, ticket support, and chat. Unfortunately, I was not able to reach live chat support. I even tried testing it multiple times throughout the week, and the support technician said that they will get back to me, but they never did. The chat ended, but nobody ever got back to me. This is a case of bad support in my opinion. Most of the leading VPNs offer 24-7 live chat support with professional and responsive staff. This does not seem to be the case with private internet access at this time. Now, about pricing, at under $3 per month with a two-year plan, private internet access is very affordable. They currently do not offer any free trials. However, with a 30-day refund window, it does function like a free trial. VPN allowing you to test the service and cancel if you don't like it. So let's come to the conclusion. Private internet access may be cheap, but it still does not offer much value. On a positive note, it does have good VPN apps that are secure and user friendly, but even with that, the drawbacks really stand out to me. And those drawbacks are slow and inconsistent speeds. Based in the United States, does not work well with streaming services, a troubling history with the parent company Cape and its CTO, who was a known cryptocurrency criminal in the past. And lastly, mediocre support that may or not be available when you need it. In short, we're not recommending this VPN. There are too many other great alternatives to consider. Thanks for watching and stay safe, guys.